Okay. I think we now are ready to start looking at other types of uh, forecasting methods. And uh, in particular, we should now try to develop a method which can be used when you have a trend in the demand. So we might have the situation here. We get some data points. Looking like this. And uh, by using a method for stationary series like the exponential smoothing or uh, the uh, moving average, uh, this uh, data material would give us some kind of average forecast here. But we can clearly see that here, even if there are some kind of uh, um, variation, we will in general have an increasing trend. We can clearly see that the expected demand should be larger than in the previous period. And the aim here is to try to find the line which best describes the actual uh, uh, trend in the, the data, like this. So here we will try to develop a line by using the, uh, the the least square method, the, the deviation of the uh, from the line and the actual <coughs> data point, which might look like this. This line will be some kind of estimate, which is best uh, adjusted to, to be uh, uh, mi minimize the square distance from any <coughs> of, the, of the points of the uh, data line. Um, and Uh, this method is called uh, regression analysis. And if you remember, uh, uh, at the start of this lecture, I presented assignment number one. And uh, the first problem on that assignment was about induction proofs. And the second was ab uh, about the regression analysis, which is this topic here. Now, uh, we know that a straight line, which we now will try to find, this is called the trend line, which uh, will uh, be the line that best uh, will describe the trend in the uh, demand. Of course, this will not continue forever. At some time, a trend will, uh, will stop or it will change from, from time to time. But according to the given data points, the data, historical data, which we actually know. Uh, this line should be um, uh, found, um, the formula for this line should be, uh, should be found, as it is best adjusted to the actual data point. And we know a linear line, uh, one line, will uh, have the formula, which uh, is like this. The y value on the y-axis should be 1 particular number A, which is the point where this line will uh, cross the y-axis, plus <coughs> a value called B, which is the gradient multiplied by x, the value on the x-axis. The gradient here will be the increase of a line from one time period to the next time period. This value is the B. How much, if this is time period 1, this is time period 2, how much is the increase from period 1 to period 2? So this line will start with uh, uh, when x is equal to 0, which means when it's crossing the y-axis, then it will have the value of A, and then it will increase by B for every new value of x. This is the formula for a straight line. And this line, this formula, should we now find by using the regression analysis uh, by analyzing the 
distance from the actual data points and the line there, minimizing the square distances. So, uh, in general, when we are talking about uh, uh, forecasting, we can say that the demand or the, let's call it the expected demand, not the actual demand, but here in this line, it will be equal to the A value plus the gradient by the B value multiplied by the time period. So then this will be the time and this will be the expected demand. This means that here the actual demand in period number two is this value, but the expected demand or the demand according to the trend line should be the value which corresponds to, to that one, which is placed on the, uh, on the demand line. And sometimes this value will be lower than the actual demand and sometimes it will be higher than the actual demand. But this line will then express the trend which is best fitted to the actual data points. And this is now the line, the formula for the line we want to find by using this regression analysis. The constant A will then describe the intersection or where this line crosses the y-axis or the demand axis. Uh, and the constant, uh, uh, the constant or the gradient B will then be the slope, the expected increase or decrease <coughs> from one time period to the next one. So uh, I will now show the formulas to find the A and B that best describe the line which fits to the given historical data. And as mentioned, proofs, the, the, the textbook uh, contains a proof on, on this occasion in appendix 2b on page 120. This proof, I will not go into details of this proof, it's mathematically a bit complex and it's not a part of the curriculum in this course, but of course you should try to study it. And here we will also see that the proof will include the formulas we actually proved by induction uh, last Tuesday, that we know that the sum of the uh, x or, or the values of uh, uh, yeah, from 1 and up to an n value, the sum of all the numbers, 1 plus and so on, up to n is equal to n, n plus 1 divided by 2. This formula was proved, last, uh, proved by induction uh, last Tuesday, and also the sum of the square of all the n first uh, uh, integer numbers. This will be 1 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 2 and so on. And this was also proved last Tuesday and this should be n multiplied by n plus 1 multiplied by 2n plus 1. These two formulas are used in the proof for finding the formulas shown here, which I will show on the blackboard in, in a short while, which actually is used to find the formula for the regression line, which best fits to the actual data points. <coughs> Okay. Yeah. Now we should try to determine these two values. First, well, the A value 
which is the intersection with the y-axis <coughs> or the demand axis, and the b-value, which is the slope or the gradient, the increase or eventually the decrease from one period to the next one. And if this is now today or the end of the historical data, we have a lot of data points here. We should find the line that best fits to these uh, data points. And then we should try to determine the B value first, slope. And when we know the slope, it's very easy to calculate the A value because we can just choose the average of all the data points, which is will be the midpoint of the line, and then use the slope and go back until we reaches the uh, the y-axis or the demand axis. So let's now first try to calculate the B and the B uses these two variables the SXX and the SXY uh, proof is given in the appendix to, uh, to chapter 2 in the textbook as mentioned I will not go into the proof here but you should study it to, uh, and try to, to understand it but here we can say that the B value is equal to the SXX now, the SXY divided by the SXX. <coughs> Where the SXX is found by the formula shown here, and as we can see here, we can recognize the uh, formulas for the sum of the square um, of the series of, uh, of the squared numbers here, and also the sum of the series of the, the integer numbers here. So these SXX and SXY um, expressions w are, are using this, uh, this fact, which, which we actually proved by induction uh, last week. So here the SXX is found to be m to the power of 2 multiplied by n plus 1 to n plus 1 divided by 6 minus n n plus 1 divided by 2 to the power of 2. This is the expression for the denominator in this formula of calculating the B value. Uh, for finding the, this is the denominator, this is the denominator, finding the denominator as xy, we also have a formula which is also proven in the, uh, in the appendix in the textbook. Here we have the n value. Num n is the number of data points. This is the sum of the i, where i is the index number, multiplied by the demand for that particular period. So if per in period 1 you have one actual demand, then you will multiply this by 1 by that demand. In period 2 you have another demand, multiply 2 by that particular demand. We can try to see here that here in period 1 you have this demand, in period 2 you have this demand, in period 3 you have this demand, and so on. <coughs> and this is a way to try to adjust this line, find the, the formula for the line that is best fitted to meet the, uh, or represent the data points. This expression should now, then you should subtract the value of n, n plus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by the sum of the actual demands. This is the formulas for 
SXX, SXY, which is used to calculate the B value here. And B is the slope. How much will the line increase from one period <coughs> to the next one, in this case? And when we know this B value, subtract the S, X, no, divide uh, SXY by SXX, we have the slope, then use that value, find the average demand, which is the midpoint of the line, and then reduce by the slope until you meet the, uh, the y-axis. So here, the A, the A value in this case, will now be the average demand, average of all data points. That would be the midpoint of the line <coughs> here, minus the slope formed by this formula, B, multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2. And then you will follow the slope down here and meet, find the A value, which, will, uh, which is where the intersection with the y-axis. And these values of A and B will then provide the best fit of the data in the least square sense, uh, minimizing the this the square of the distances between the measured value, measured data points, and the actual uh, line that will represent the, the best uh, fit to, to, the, to the data points using the least square method. So now we have these uh, formulas here. Uh, and let's look how we can try to use these formulas to find uh, to use regression for uh, finding such a line and use the regression line because when we have this formula which is best fitted to the actual data point it's very easy to say that okay we have data points up to here which might be period number 10 what happens in period 11 it's very easy just continue with this line and put in 11 for this x here you have the A value, they have the B value, and the variable is the X. So we can now make a forecast into the future <coughs> by just putting in new values for the variable X here, or the time period T here, which is the correct expression in, in our example. Okay, let's now have a look at one problem in the textbook, number 28 on page six, no, page <coughs> 76. Page uh, 76 and continue on page uh, 77, problem number 28. And here we have a park in California, and they have kept uh, close uh, tabs on the number of patrons or visitors using the park since the opening in January 1993. And they have data for the first six months of operation. So they have data for six months. We should now first draw a graph, subproblem A, of these six data points. Assume that January is period one and February two and so on. And then just use some kind of ruler, try to estimate the values by ourselves by looking at the graph. And then try to compute the exact values in subproblem B of the A and B by using the formulas here calculating these numbers and uh, uh, and find the, the value or the, or the expression for the regression line and then make forecast for ju from July to through December by using the line which is based on data from January to June continue the line with the same trend as found by by this um, uh, this regression method and then sub problem D comment the results 
and especially uh, how confident would you be about the accuracy of the forecast that you obtain. So let's now first try to analyze this. We have the data points. which is uh, uh, this is problem 28 and uh, we now have the month 1 to 6 we have the actual values the actual demand in the six months or in this case the actual number of visitors so the demand the d values will first be 133 in period number two february 183 period number three 285 four 614 5 will be 1876 and 6 will be 2550. We remember that the formulas here, then we need the sum of the demand, so we can just sum all these together. Then we will get a sum which is 5667. And this is the di. And we also remember that here we will have the sum of the index number multiplied by the demand, which means that we have the i di. And month is, of course, the same as the index number. So 1 multiplied by 133 is this value. 2 multiplied by 183, 366, 3 multiplied by 285 will be 855, 4 multiplied by 640 is 2560, 5 multiplied by 1876 <coughs> will be 9380, And 6 multiplied by 2,550 will be 15,300. And this will be a sum of 28,594. So, here we have the values. We have the actual numbers uh, of uh, visitors. And we have the index number multiplied by the number of visitors. So the first in problem A here, we should try to make an estimate. Okay, 133, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And uh, let's say that 133 is at this level. 183, uh, slightly higher. 285, or even a bit higher here, 640 up to this point, then 1876, we have a quite large increase up to here, and the value for June 2550 will be approximately up here. So now, looking at these numbers, <coughs> Did I miss something? Let's see. One, two, three, six, forty. Yeah, we have six, six number here, so of course. Trying to estimate the best fitted line here. You can see that these numbers are quite very much higher than the others, so I think we will get something like this. Maybe not a very good estimate here, but anyway, use some kind of eyeball estimate, as the problem uh, description says. And then we can see that, okay, here we will have 